Hey family and um, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's vlog is a little bit different and um, we out here in nature. I must admit it's not um, a lot of times that you find me out here but honestly like I'm going to insert some drone shots for you guys. It's, it's, it's incredible um, and for this to be our first time out here is a bit wild but you know let's just let me let me, i could ramble on for forever so let's just get straight into the video it's sort of like for you guys to get to know me deeper okay cool let's get right into the video and don't forget to like comment subscribe and definitely help the channel out by sharing this to people who you may think may like the the content i put out let's get into it to those that don't already know, my name is Joel Musonda. I was born on the 12th of February in 98. I believe it was a Thursday. Um, I should have asked my mom first, but I believe it was a Thursday and it was raining and it was early hours of the morning. So that's me. Um, this is my father and this is my mother. Um, my father is of Zambian descent and my mom is from the East. I like to say always the East, but um, East Africa, Burundi specifically. So already my birth was a mixture of um, multiple, I guess, cultures and languages. And um, oh, I should have said this earlier, but I was born in Lumubashi, um, Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, and yeah, that's essentially what deals with my birth. And then when I was about one years old, um, we moved to the capital city, Kinshasa. And uh, we were there for, I believe, six, seven years um, before, um, I think now the war has been like um, pretty much in the forefront of the news and stuff. But back then there was a sort of civil war that was happening due to elections that we don't have to get into. But um, soon after that, my parents decided it was time for us to get out of the country. And so then began um, a series of moving around from different countries like Kenya. We were in Egypt for a bit, Tanzania for a couple of years, I believe. And then we finally decided to go Canada, but that fell through the last moment. And so South Africa was the next best option because at the time we could only speak Engl uh, not English, French, Swahili and Lingala. Um, and yeah, life experiences was great, but now it was time to add English to the mix. So South Africa, here we come. And then in South Africa, um, funny story. Um, so in South Africa, they do school from January to December. It's very weird, I know. Um, and I was used to, is it September to June? So it was a bit weird. We had to wait for a while um, to start school again. And um, unfortunately, due to me not being able to speak English, I know, um, I got held back. Um, and so, but there's, there's, there's blessings. And I think that's my whole story is no matter how bad the downs can be, there's always something to learn. And I'm sure that's the same for a lot of people. At least that's the way I tend to look at things. Um, it's not just take the bad for the bad, but look for the beautiful and the good within the bad. And one of the greatest things that happened was the school we went to, um, 10 years old me, imagine, 10 years old me, was in the exact same grade as my now girlfriend. So that makes it, I've known her for more than half of my life, which is a story time in itself. But um, South Africa, um, in as much as there was beautiful moments, like meeting her, um, there was a lot of downs. Um, I wouldn't say we were rich or well off but we had enough you know for a lot and not even a lot we had enough you know um and we we're blessed in that sense and my dad would go through periods of having work and not having work and when you start realizing wait we starting to not have as much you know and now you're starting to bounce from house to house and school to school and um that's when we realize we're really in a bad situation and so much so that um uh, at some point we couldn't even renew our visas and we essentially had to become like um, refugees in the country but this is this is just some of my story and throughout my YouTube I'm, o I'm not only using my YouTube for um, vlogs and entertainment it's also because I feel like my 
destiny or what God has put inside of me is the ability to speak and tell a story. And that's why, you know, throughout my, my years of living, I've come to realize that that's my calling. And YouTube is a way for me to practice some of my cinematography, director, um, what do you say, like nuances? I don't know. I get to practice to be a director. I get to practice to be a director and a cinematographer. Um, I'm only with a phone and a drone, you know, but I'm blessed. Um, and I know my story is going to create or be a source of a lot of beautiful films and other creations and projects. And it's going to channel and, you know, soon enough on this channel as well, you'll be able to see or hear my voice in it. So today is just a way to get to a little behind the scene as to what makes me me and I hope you enjoy it um, I've put a lot of thought and work into it I mean a freaking on top of a hill which it's only like the second time I've done so that's something as well uh, but anyways enough of me rambling and let's get straight into the video so for the past almost two years this is where I've been. It's in the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. And why? For education. So, this person asks um, what my three relationship advice would be to my younger self. And first and foremost, my first relationship, I believe, was like when I was 21. So, I wasn't really doing none of these relationship things when I was younger. But um, from experience, what I would say is setting clear boundaries between me and not my girl but me and other people you know um i think that was the big struggle i had um because there wasn't much like well of course there was differences but not too many differences between me and my girl and me and other people and i think that was not only wrong but it was something that was just i struggled with for whatever reason so that would be an advice i would give my younger self in terms of relationship is right in the start, just set very clear boundaries um, and stern boundaries. Um, yeah, and for the second one, I would say, um, again, from what I have felt, um, were, I think, pressures in terms of specifically um, finances. And I feel like when you're younger, that should not be... Um, a determining factor of course it's dependent on who it is you're pursuing I mean if the person is quite materialistic then that's not gonna work in it but I feel like when you're younger it should just be about having fun and um, enjoying each other's company and hopefully learning about self you know and when you start being in your head about if you know financially you're good for it and stuff like that then i think you kind of lose a lot of um benefits that it could give you you know for the last one why don't we give it to the person that knows me best so babe <laughs> from knowing who i am um and how i was what would your advice be to younger me I think that I would definitely tell you to not limit yourself in terms of like cert having certain expectations of yourself and then, you know, because of life or because of certain things that have happened, you're not able to do something. But now just because you're not able to do that, you know, doesn't mean that things have to end at that point, you know? I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like, if you say something to your head, don't be so stubborn <laughs> in thinking that it's the only way to, um, you know, the only way that you can move forward. You know, there are plenty of options and plenty of things and ways that you can make something work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, of course, we had to have some people that just wanted to disturb my peace, innit? it? Um, so we got this question. And um, as we're recording this, it is on the date, Saturday, where we are playing City in the finals in the FA Cup. 
and I'm hearing that we might fire our coach, my dear beloved Eric Ten Hag. Um, and if that happens, it messes up my answer for the question. But my answer to that question is, if we look at what Arsenal has done, what City even has done, is they gave their coach time. And the key for us to become good again is to give our coach time. Um, this season has been mad unlucky for us. Um, and there's still some rats that were left over from previous ma managers that deserve to be axed from our team. Um, and then we can see uh, the fruits, you know. Um, but until then, I don't know. And if we sack our manager, then that's just going to take us like steps backwards, you know, because the next manager can come in and do well, but then the second season again, second season, sin second season syndrome will happen again, our players down tool and it's back to zero. So I hope we stick with Ten Hag um, and with the new structures and everything, I think next season we'll definitely be competing for more trophies, you know. So yeah, that's my answer. But let's go swim now. Also, shout out to this person for asking me if I'm okay. Um, I mean, if you just look at where I'm at, life is good, man, you know? Um, and I hope you are doing well as well. Um, I'm ready for the next chapter. I'm almost done with what I came here to do, which was studying. And now it's onwards, onwards and upwards, you know? Um, and I'm not sure when we'll ever be in the same city, but if ever, we for sure are gonna link up, right? Bless, let's go swim. So I had this vision of giving you a sick drone shot of me swimming in the clear blue seas, but the wind had other ideas, so you simply get me enjoying being in the murky waters instead. We did however go swim a couple of days later, and needless to say, the water was not only clear, but the wind was kind enough to let me give you what I envisioned. So, watch this. And as for my ideal life at 40, well, professionally, I hope to have established my name at least within the continent as one of the top up-and-coming directors and cinematographer. Personally, I'd be married with all my kids, so watching them grow up healthy and passionate about what they love would be such a blessing to experience. Financially, I want to make enough money so that none of my family or friends could ever lack, you know? And above all, I just want to have the ability to travel places that I've only dreamt of, doing what I love doing with the people I love most while staying happy because you simply never know when your time will come and one thing I'm never gonna do is live with any regrets. My sister asks me this and to be honest I don't I'm not a big fan of like the smell but the biggest thing is the bones so get rid of the bones for me give me a fillet and I'm good man and with this and this well first of all yes of course um, I didn't actually think I would, to be fair, um, because I don't necessarily miss people like that. But I think this time away has definitely made me realize that not only do I miss people, but it gets it gets pretty, pretty hectic sometimes, you know. Um, but yeah. And for the second question, God willing, sooner than you think. And for this one. Well, ma'am, that honestly all depends on you. You need to leave the country first, innit? So let me know and we there. Ooh, this was interesting. Let's see. Dear 10-year-old me, I know you're not so keen on going to South Africa and truth be told, it will be tough at first, but you will adapt so quickly and meet incredible people that will eventually become your family and you will live and love and be so happy still. Things will get much tougher, I know, but you're strong enough to handle it. And when you feel alone, know that God's always there and you'll never leave you, alright? You've always had that faith and things will turn and at some point they do and guess what? Everything you went through will start making a lot of sense as you pursue your dreams knowing your purpose. P.S. I'll never give up on you either. Love. Future you. Thanks.